chapter 8 begins with uh, Jesus going to the Mount of Olives, where the teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They tell Jesus this woman was caught in an act of adultery, and the law commanded us to stone such women. What do you say? And he answered, Let any one of you who is without sin throw be, be the first to throw a stone at her. And then presumably he stoops down to the ground and begins writing out something um, about sins or something about the individuals. Usually people guess that he is um, writing down sins here. So it's interesting. Um, these are the Pharisees. Uh, the Pharisees ask the guards, why didn't you bring him in? And uh, so after the guards failed to bring him in, they must have followed him over to the Mount of Olives. And uh, the teachers of the law and Pharisees talk to him the next day. Anyway, it could be pointed out that if any of them were without, st without sin and then they threw a stone at her, um, that would uh, immediately become their first sin. Uh, it's notable, I think, here that this is all in italics. The reason it's in italics is because, um, well, it's not in this footnote. It's in the footnote from the chapter before. Here we go. The earliest manuscripts and many other ancient witnesses do not have John 53 through 811. Uh, looks like they skipped John 53 here too. Or well, let me see. John 53 through 8.11. Some put the verses after John 7.36. So if they put it before, at John 7.36, it would have been before he said, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. So that, that would put it in a different spot in the story. Um, some manuscripts put it after John 21, 25. That's pretty late in the game. As a matter of fact, yes, that is the very last chapter. Um, so John 21, 25 is the very last verse of John. And some manuscripts don't even put it in John's gospel at all. They put it in Luke after Luke 21.38 or Luke 24.53. Luke 21.38 is a when Jesus taught at night at the Mount of Olives, and this was specifically at the very last time he would preach because this was his last Passover in Luke and uh, Luke 24:53 that puts uh, this event uh, somewhere after Jesus has already been resurrected. But I guess a lot of modern versions put this right after the Festival of Tabernacles. So anyway, Zechariah 14:4 has this reference to the Mount of Olives, where also the reference to the uh, Festival of Tabernacles was. Now, the Mount of Olives was also the place where uh, Jesus prayed uh, the night before he was crucified, I think. or Well, no, the new night before he was captured. It was the location where Judas... Uh, it was the location where Judas came and kissed Jesus, because, of course, Judas knew that he would be at the Mount of Olives, as he always was. And of course, in fact, all of the Pharisees already knew where Jesus was. They just needed Judas to walk up and kiss him, because kissing was probably something that was frowned upon. So in Zechariah 14.4, it says, On that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives east of Jerusalem, and the Mount of Olives will be split in two from east to west, forming a great valley with half the mountain moving north and half the moving south. So I'm picturing Mount of Olives north and Mount of Olives south and they move both ways 
and on that day uh, living water will flow out from Jerusalem half of it east to the Dead Sea and half of it west to the Mediterranean Sea so here's kind of conceptual map Mount of Olives North Mount of Olives South Dead Sea Mediterranean Sea so looking for an earthquake in the days of Isaiah Isaiah king of Judah um, which way do you flee uh, let's look at Amos as a matter of fact I'm not gonna look at Amos I'm gonna look at Isaiah chapter 6 which was the year that King Isaiah died and the Lord asked whom shall I send and who will go for us and I guess this is first person so it must be Isaiah saying here I am send me and the Lord told Isaiah go and tell this people be ever hearing but never understanding be ever seeing but never perceiving make the heart of this people calloused make their ears dull and close their eyes otherwise they might see with their eyes hear with their ears understand with their hearts and turn and be healed then I said, For how long, Lord? And he answered, Until the cities lie ruined and without inhabitant, until the houses are left deserted and the fields ruined and ravaged, until the Lord has sent everyone far away and the land is utterly forsaken, and only a tenth remains in the land. It will again be laid to waste. But as the terebinth and oak leave stumps when they are cut down, so the holy seed will be the stump in the land. So how do you flee by the mountain valley? It extends to Azel. You will flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Isaiah, the king of Judah. It's right here with the otherwise. Use the otherwise. See with your eyes, hear with your ears, understand with your heart, and turn and be healed. That is that is the mountain valley that extends towards Azel in the Mediterranean Sea. I should check that on a map. Well, that's a little bit difficult to see because um, looks like the Mount of Olives and the little token for placing it on this scale are in the identical spot. Um, really all you can see on this map is that the Dead Sea is over to the east, Mediterranean is over to the west, and uh, it's hard to tell whether Azel goes one way or the other. Anyway, I guess what my point is here is that what John is doing by putting this little passage into uh, his story, uh, this is really the only reference to uh, forgiveness that uh, Jesus makes in the entire Gospel of John. And as such, it, uh, you know, uh, with uh, the poet poetic symbolism of everything going on, um, what's going on here is this is where Jesus stands with his feet across uh, the Mount of Olives and half of the uh, living water will flow out of Jerusalem, half of it to the Dead Sea and half of it west to the Mediterranean Sea. And I'm thinking that people that follow this attitude that uh, we should not be uh, condemning people for sins uh, because we all have a bit of sin in our lives. So this is where the living water generally moves towards the Mediterranean Sea rather than the Dead Sea. There is only one small issue is that it actually does say let any of you who is without sin be the first to throw her throw a stone at her so if there was there anyone who had never sinned or 
had uh, or believed they had never sinned for some reason, then this uh, not not only gives them permission, but gives them a prerogative to stone the woman. So one could think that this passage is promoting forgiveness, or one could read it to think that it is a promotion of making sure that even the uh, most righteous of people commits like murder. And I'll get into the rest of chapter eight in my next video. The next, uh, the rest of chapter eight seems to be the second son of the father riddle of John's gospel. And so I'll be stating what I think the solution to this riddle is and see how it fits in with um, all of the words in context. Might not be absolutely perfect, but I think I've got a pretty close solution to the riddle.